Kip and Becky Rondi operate a certified organic CSA in southeastern Ohio. How can they then toy with the idea of taking summers off? Winter gardening, of course. On this farm, we are growing fresh produce 12 months out of the year. We're harvesting it 12 months out of the year. We're selling it 12 months out of the year. And we are, we're seeking to provide year-round employment for farm workers, provide an income that's decent for us and our employees, and just generally trying to make the world a better place. <laughs> Growing through the winter, yeah, we kind of stumbled upon that. Uh, we, the house we, we, we're seated in right now uh, does have some heat, but none of the other nine houses have any heat at all. We've been doing this for seven or eight, eight years extensively, and we've discovered how by covering the plants at the appropriate times in the evening, you can make the plants grow all winter long. We grow about 15 different vegetable crops throughout the winter. Uh, lots of lettuces and greens of different sorts, Swiss chard, kale, collard greens, mustard greens, things of that sort. And then we also grow some root crops like carrots and radishes. We do some early spring peas. It's a big deal for us personally, but it's a big deal for us as a society. Food can't be traveling 3,000 3, miles before it reaches the grocery shelf. It needs to travel 50, 100, 25 miles before it reaches the grocery shelf. When diesel finally gets to $10 a gallon, all bets are off about where the food's coming from and who's gonna be able to afford it. So the thing that's really imperative right now is that we train farmers on how to do this sort of operation now. The first thing that led us into investigating it more is there is a natural gas well on the property. That's a more or less free, low-cost source of energy uh, to help extend our seasons. We didn't want to be overly dependent on the well and have it dry up and then have to completely change our way of producing crops. So that's why we started to experiment without heat in these greenhouses. And so nine out of our 10 greenhouses are now completely without heat. And there's much less light, there's much less airflow. There's obviously extreme cold to deal with. And so we've just sort of, through trial and error, been able to mitigate those factors as best we can. And it's actually become a lot more successful than any of us dreamed. Well, one of the nice things about the winter is because of the typical cloudier cool weather, the need to irrigate is substantially less. In a typical week, I'd say we maybe water once. And sometimes, if we have a very cold January, February, we might have to water once a month. The angle of light in the winter is a little different. So with the sun dropping low, we wanted to orient them such that the angle of light would maximize the, the plants being able to access the, the most amount of sun as they could. Having the windows situated with the predominant wind being able to push from the west to east was important. So we have lower doors on the west and upper doors on the east and it creates a small chimney effect so that when the breeze, which is predominantly coming from the west, is able to hit those lower doors and then push the warm air um, out the upper doors and, and ventilate those greenhouses. So we're beginning our winter CSA now. So for the next 20 weeks, we'll supply approximately 180 to possibly 200 folks with a bag of groceries every week for 20 weeks. CSA stands for Community Supported Agriculture and it's essentially a subscription sort of operation where the customers give the farm $500 up front and then the farm supplies them with a bag of groceries every week for 20 weeks. That's very helpful to the farms because we don't have to borrow operating capital to get up to make these sales and we have a really good idea what our sales are going to be. You know, Athens is such a, a, a unique and blessed little community with this amazing local food economy and all of these producers that have been around for a long time. And so as part of a way to compete with other CSAs in the markets that we serve, we decided to add some of these very specialized Athens-based 
businesses as partner items to the vegetable shares that we deliver. It's important for us to be certified organic because we sell to stores that require it. <laughs> and, and people require it so that there's some sort of standard across the board so that they can buy from somebody in Toledo or Louisville, Kentucky or Champaign, Illinois. I mean, and, and if it's certified organic, there's a base. That means that certain things have been met. And, and I think that that's the importance of being certified. We are a farm. We are making our living as a farm. Nobody here has a trust fund. Nobody in here inherited any large amounts of money to do this. This is coming out of straight commerce. For us, growing year round is trying at best. There's no downtime for us. My personal long-term goal is that we would grow a lot in the winter and we would grow heirloom tomatoes for Kaido, who's a big organic distributor in Newcomerstown, Ohio, in the summer. But we would scale back and we would just do the farmer's market and then do a, a large winter CSA, maybe a 500 person winter CSA, and give us some time, some, a little bit more downtime. So right now, Becky and, and I work seven days a week and have for a long, long time. What we do here is very much a lifestyle. It's very fulfilling. It's never ending. If you want a day off, you just have to take it. I mean, it's not like everything shuts down. Nothing shuts down. Things grow all the time, every day. I feel like here at Green Edge, along with our environmental organic goals, is, you know, can we make farming a viable enterprise again as, some, as an option for young people if they want to get into it? You know, for so long now, it's been, well, you can farm, but you better get another job on the side. And so what we're trying to do here is create a model that if folks want to do this for a living and make it in such a way so that, you know, your heart and soul can go into it and you don't have to have that off-farm job to support yourself. And so that's what we're going for here.